Hello and welcome. My name is Mark Bletstein, the physician founder of Physician Pre-Sentence Report Service. Today, I'm going to go through a tutorial on how to use email, how the email and phone systems work within the Federal Bureau of Prisons, as well as for those of you who are at home and what you should expect when you get a phone call and how to make sure that you're ready to accept an email so that you can communicate once your loved one has it all set up once they're in prison. And so if you go to my website, my company, pprsus.com, I too was convicted of a felony in 2006. Um, I was grateful in 2010 to have my license to practice reinstated in full. And I chose a year or two after that to transition over to working with all of you because the prison reform, the cr being charged in with a crime in the United States of America, once you get indicted, especially federally, um, the, the feds, the Department of Justice, they have their case. And you really don't want to step out of line at all. And whether you think you were guilty, you're not guilty, you were innocent, however you approach before the sentencing hearing, by this point, you're looking at going into a federal prison camp all the way up to a high security facility or med federal medical center. Um, you kind of need to understand how things work. So at least this YouTube is going to be about email. And so email within the Federal Bureau of Prisons is divided into two parts. From the inside, where you create the email and send it to your loved ones, it's called true links. For those that are at home and they receive an email, it's called core links. So the rules, everything within the Federal Bureau of Prisons, everything is done with what's called program statements. And so the program statements, maybe make this larger. No, okay. Is right here. And so we're going to open up the program statement. And this is what you'll see with the program statement. It basically goes through how this electronic messaging system works and the rules of the road. So true links, you're going to be charged if you're direct dialing. This the money is taken out of your um out of your commissary account. And you're it's the charge is based on five cents a minute. And it's based on when you are on their true link system. So it doesn't matter if you're typing, if you're reading, or if you're printing at 15 cents a page, the minute you have logged in, uh, that's when they consider that you're active. The max amount of time, and I'll reading this as we go through, is 30 minutes. And then you must wait another 30 minutes before the computer lets you, before you can go back into the computer system. Plus there may be others who are waiting. Minutes are sold in lots. And the messages can be either approximately 2,000 words or 13,000 characters. And the characters are going to be letters, numbers, and I'm not sure, but it also could be the space between words. But either way, you're going to see a countdown type of timer or clock right there on your screen. And it's going to be plain text with nothing fancy. Do not at any time put in your email for them to forward that your email message is someone else. That could get you kicked. That could get you disciplined. You could be removed, meaning that you may be, you may be, the privilege of using the email system may be taken away, and you don't need to have any charges against you or being disciplined, especially if you're working hard towards getting earned time credits to the first step back, good time credits, and you're working to try and get home as early as you can. When you print pages, it's approximately fifteen cents a page. Everything that you do is going to be monitored. What could being restricted? You could be restricted if there's a, if you have a history that threatens institutional security or the, or the public. If you're under investigation for disciplinary violations related to true links or core links. In other words, if you've gone ahead and, and either conducted illegal, any kind of business over the email, because you're not allowed to do that. You've conducted illegal business, you've threatened somebody, or you've gone ahead and suggested that they forward the message. No, all of that is no. Disciplinary sanctions have restricted the person from emailing for a specific period of time. That may happen to you. And then when there are particular email or sexual offense criminal charges, and these are up to the warden to ultimately have the last word, but we'll go through that momentarily. Core links, again, no forwarding to any third parties. Not You just don't want that to happen. Using true links, the Bureau of Prisons is considered as a privilege. And the warden or any authorized representative can limit or deny you that privilege of working on or sending emails. Individual inmates may be excluded from the program as part of a classification procedure. Again, it's up to the warden. 
Everything you do, and in this case, all incoming and outgoing electronic messages, transactional data, message contacts, everything is monitored. Remember that you're in prison. Don't try and outsmart them. Everything you do is monitored. And you may think you're getting away with something, but you know it, it all depends if you like playing Russian roulette with a loaded weapon. It's not my cup of tea. And if you're working hard, again, to get earned time credits, to get home early, to earn good time credits, to get home early, don't do something here that's not that smart. BOP staff can can reject individual messages, period, where they feel that the, your message jeopardizes the institution's interest. Each inmate acknowledges before you they let you on their system, the email system, you have to sign up for a participation agreement, which pretty much says that you have you understand all of these qualifiers. And this participation agreement, when you sign it, is going to look like this. And essentially, it's the inmate agreement for participation in True Links, electronic messaging system. You have your name, number, and you're going to go through everything. And then you're going to sign it. And so the BOP is covering their bases. Restrictions. As I said, if it's determined that the use would threaten the safety, security, or orderly running of the institution or the protection of the public and staff. Public safety factors, in other words, with the sex offender, doesn't mean that they're automatically excluded, but the warden will get involved. If it's pending an investigation or disciplinary action for misuse or a messaging within the True Link system, that could cause you to uh, have your ability to use this, the uh, system suspended. How do you get all the information, all your contact list, their emails into the system? You have a contact list. This is a form that you're going to fill out. There's two contacts per page. And on each one, you're going to put the name, their first name, last name, how you know them, and then give further information about them at the bottom. And this is this form is important for many reasons. One, it will set it up. But two, you may only exchange electronic messages in the community for those that have accepted your request to communicate. In other words, after you've filled out that form, you will then be sending out emails to see if they're willing to accept your email request to communicate. Attorneys, they have special mail. Special mail through the post office means that it's private and that the Bureau of Prisons does not open that mail. Special mail through email is different. Attorneys, special mail recipients, and other legal representatives on their electronic, electronic message contact list they have to acknowledge that these, these messages will not be treated as privileged communications and will be subject to monitoring. Inmate to inmate communication. You're allowed to communicate via electronic or via email with an inmate confined in a BOP facility if that particular inmate is a member of your immediate family or is a party or witness to the, to the legal action in which both inmates are involved. And here, suffice to say that you need to get the unit managers at each in, at each institution to improve, and the final say is with the warden. On that form where you put that person, your contact pe person's information, outgoing message labels will be printed, and those have to go on every letter that goes out of the institution. So when I, I too was convicted of a felony in 2006, I was grateful to be able to get my medical license to practice back in 2010, but they didn't have this. At that time, I would just I wrote the person's name and address right on the uh, envelope. Here, it has to be on those labels, at least as far as I understand. Electronic electronic messages. Everything is monitored. I mean, there may not be cameras up everywhere, but they're listening to all your phone calls. They are reading all the messages, and they're probably opening some of the, if not most, if not all, of the letters that come in through the regular mail. Again, the contact. You need to fill out that contact page in order for an email to be able to be sent out. Core links. Core links is what's received by persons outside of the Federal Bureau of Prisons. So in order to get to look and see what that looks like, pull this up on the website. You can go to my website if you choose. There you go. I put in my email and my password, but this is what you'll see. And so here, initially, you may not have gotten the email alert yet, but you can start. And you need to register by putting in an email and a password and go to register. As you go to register, you're going to see this core links come up with all these different options. BOP is not going I don't think they're going to let you text because no one's allowed phones. I don't think you can put money in through core links. Mailbox is all that we're interested in. That's it. So the only one that we're going to mention right now is going to be mailbox. Registration continues. 
doesn't have to be in this order, but you need to fill out everything that's in red. Your first name, last name, email address, redo, retype the email address, put in your password, and then retype the password. Then when you get an email alert from your first email, did you accept it? If yes, you're going to notice an identification code. And next to that, it's going to say it may, may expire in 10 days. It's an alphanumeric code. You need to copy that and enter that right there in that identification, identification code box. Then check that you're over 18 and go next. And you're all ready to receive emails. This will allow you to correspond from your home PC or computer, like I'm on now, an Apple device of any kind. You can go to the App Store or through Google. You can go and pull up an app for your Android type phone or Microsoft Store, Microsoft App Store, and download the app for your Android type device. An overview of Core Links. It's reliable, it's a web based system. <clears throat> You'll need to have an account um, for your relatives. They can get a premium account, which has at least a little bit, it makes it easier for them. For you, you don't need credit card or anything, you need money in your commissary account. With Core Links, if they have a password, don't worry, the system has you covered, and I'll go through that in a minute, but you cannot talk to them. Your first email alert from your loved one upon receiving the alert, once you say you accept it, then you have to get that identification code. If you're thinking about blocking an email on core links, really seriously consider it, because once you block them, you have to go then through a lengthy process where you got to mail the Federal Bureau of Prisons and jump through their hoops. It's a long process. It's not easy. So you lost your, you forgot your password. My my recommendation is don't lose your password. If you do, this is what happens when you go to this website. I'll pull it up here. And you'll notice in a minute that it's here and you pull it up and you have all these different parts. And so what I'm showing you here is that you have all those different options there and you can take care of that right there on the website. We're now gonna move over to phone calls. Remember, calls are monitored and recorded. No three-way calls are allowed. This can result in you getting disciplined, being put in the shoe or the hole or being restricted from the telephone or commissary. It's just not a good way to begin. Hours you can use, it could be from six in the morning till maybe 11.30 at night, it depends. You can get up to 300 minutes of phone calls per month with each call about 15 minutes because there's more people for each phone so you can't have a call lasting longer. During the call, it's gonna there'll be a voice reminder that says this is a call for this is a call being monitored for, by the Federal Bureau of Prisons. In most cases, it may must wait an hour from their last phone call to place another one. If you're placing a collect call, the recipient must agree to pay for that call. For local calls, it can cost anywhere from six cents to thirty-eight cents per minute. Long distance, up to fifty-six cents per minute. And this could be this could be old news for all I know. Direct dial can cost you for local calls up to six cents, long distance anywhere in the U.S. 21 cents, Canada 35, Mexico 55, other international calls 99 cents. Again, this I'm not I'm not promising that this is current information. In November and December, the warrants may authorize additional minutes on top of the 300. For those who of you who are in stay prison, your calls are much more expen expensive. Uh, President Biden signed a bill. And we'll open that up right here. Because your the cost of your phone calls are something like five dollars. It's just crazy money. Um, some of them, well, I don't know. How, I'm not sure how what the average price for calls are, but some people had to pay two hundred dollars a year to talk to a grandson. I mean, it it was crazy money. But this particular law was signed in. This particular bill was signed into law, and so hopefully that puts a dent in that. Lastly, cell phones. A new law, new law makes possession or use of a cell phone or wireless device a crime, and it's punishable by up to a year in prison. The person who smuggles the cell phone or wireless device into prison is also guilty of a crime, punishable by a year in prison. In prison, and on top of all that, you've worked so hard to try and get out early. You've now lost good time credits from first step back programs. If if you've been on the drug program and you come out of it. They'll take it away. Earn time credits for good behavior. I mean, good time credits for earn is good behavior. My mistake. Earn time credits is first step back. And if you earn, if you took the RDAP program, they could take that away. As well as they could put you in the hole or shoe or isolation and maybe even triggering where they decide to send you to another prison facility. 
I hope you have found this helpful. If I went through this too quickly, please feel free to go back, Physician Pre-Sentence Report Service, pprsus.com, and then just you know Google, look here for using email and phones at federal prison, a step-by-step -step guide. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you all have a safe day. Thank you for listening, and I'm grateful for your time.